There he is. Joining me this afternoon is Mr. Muhammad Scarface Alavi. Coming out of Sydney is 7-0, the super fight lightweight champion, the XFC featherweight champion, and he's fighting Justin Van Heerden at Eternal 67 on the Gold Coast on July 16. Mate, we're a couple of weeks out. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling great. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm very good. I'm very good. Look, you're a hard man to find info on online. Uh, yeah. I managed to gather that you were uh, you were born in Iran and grew up wrestling. Can you give us a bit of info on that backstory? Yeah, I'm born in Iran and I've been living in Australia since 2013. Yeah, I started training as a most of the pageant by wrestling, but uh, I've been doing a lot of mixed martial arts like judo, karate, and yeah, some other stuff, kickboxing. But when I came to Australia, I started starting MMA as an amateur, so yeah, I've been in this game for a long time. And long time. Yeah, long time, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you got a, as you were saying, a little bit of a late start. Now, that you didn't have any uh, amateur fights listed online. Did you compete in amateurs? Yeah, I compete in amateur. My record in, in amateur was six and one. Yeah. Six and one. Yeah, uh, but I, it was was all that in Australia? Yeah, all in Australia. In my country, I was doing wrestling, judo, karate. Yeah, I've been in uh, national team. I been I was champion in wrestling, karate, and judo as well. Uh, so your first pro fight that was uh, scheduled for 2014, but that got cancelled. You didn't end up uh, in the pro scene in Australia until seven, 2017. What was um? Yeah. What was what? What happened during that gap? Yeah, it was in 2014. I was supposed to fight my debut in professional. I think it was 2016. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, yeah, and I had some injuries, so I have to cancel it. So, yeah, I started uh, 2017. Yeah, so that fight in 2017 was against Josh Payne. Uh, yeah, a- you, were, you were 0 and 0 going into that, and he was 8 and 7. Um, did you, what was what was the decision making process behind that, and, and did you feel confident going in against yeah. someone with so much experience? Yeah, because uh, I've been training really hard for a long time, and I'm really confident in myself. Yeah, for the first fight, it wasn't like really good decision, but I was pretty confident. I know who I am, so uh, that's why we discussed with my coach, and so we we went for it. And I got it. It was a really good fight. It was amazing. Like debut, I was really I had a good uh, performance, and yeah. That was uh, so that ended uh, rear naked choke in round one. That was yeah, a, that yeah, is a okay. very good performance. Three minutes in, mate. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so you had three fights that year. The the third fight that you had was a highlight reel KO, uh, the head kick yeah. against Evan Cox in ACB. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the the pace slowed down a bit after that. Uh, what was the reasoning behind that? Because uh, I was ready to fight, but. There wasn't anyone who wants to fight me, and it was really hot that time. Even still, still, there's not too many options for me. I was calling out everyone. At that time, I was really want to fight with number one or number two was Josh Kulibao. He's fighting US now. And he was, uh, he was talking me. And so, yeah, I was ready to fight with anyone, but no one wants to smoke him, so it was really hard that time. But it's still the same. It's really hard to get me far in Australia because, I don't know, everyone wants to protect their record. And mm. This is how it is. I, yeah, it is what it is. Nobody ever wants to smoke, brother. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> because it's been the four or five years. Yeah, it's been like this for four or five years. So uh, I know. It was was that um, was that the problem? I know the coronavirus hit obviously 2020, 2021. That was all affected. Yeah. Um, I think you had some fights scheduled through that period as well that that didn't come together. Was was that just because of COVID? Yeah, but it, it was because of COVID. I had a fight in June 20, 
I think yeah, it was super fight. But one week, I think one week or ten days before the fight, yeah, it got cancelled. So that was really bad luck. What what did you um what did you end up doing during that downtime? Was that frustrating for you? Yeah, it was really frustrating. But I was training. Uh, I never stopped. I never stopped training even during the um, lockdown and all those stuff. I, I was training every day. Uh, training and fighting is like part of my life. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe I'm born for this, so I never stopped training. Uh, during it was really a hard time uh, because all the gym was closed, no fight, no promotion. But mm-hmm. uh, I never stopped training. Were you training uh, down at ATT at that point, or or at, mm-hmm. is it PNM is your gym? Yeah, PMA, PMA, PMA. Uh, yep. Yeah, yep. I used to train at ATT since 2013 to 2000, I think middle of 2016. And after that, I joined to PMA. So, all right, we'll skip ahead to the Cody Barnwell fight now. You jumped up to, to lightweight to take that fight, the super, uh, super fight title. Um, yeah. First time leaving the second round, mate, how did you feel? What happened in that fight? Yeah, in that fight, I think... Cody Bowman was uh, my hardest part because uh, he's actually he's a welterweight fighter, welterweight fighter, and mm-hmm. I'm featherweight, so I jumped to lightweight and he came down to lightweight. And at the first time, at the beginning of the fight, he threw a kick and he just broke my finger at the beginning of Ooh. the fight. So at the beginning of the fight, I lose my right hand. It's just actually it's like he broke my finger and my finger was like out of the place. I just fixed it and keep, uh, kept fighting. So it was really a hard fight because of that situation. But thank God I won that fight. I think he was my hardest fight because he was here. He's, he's actually a relatively fighter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it is what it is. Uh, at the end, I won the fight and I'm super fired like the champion. Is that that's got to be reassuring to you that you can go through you know a bit of uh, adversity like that and still come out on top with the win? Yeah, yeah, that was like because I've been training with like a lot of coaches and champions. Um, mm-hmm. I learned from the, my coach and inside the gym. So even if you bro- something happens during the fight, uh, you cannot uh, give up. You have to go and just give your best. So. I think those mentality and those hard training in the gym give me that, uh, give me that core and uh, the drive. Yeah, drive to do, uh, to still fight even with broken hands. Mm-hmm. What um what weight class do you think you perform better in? Are you are you happy up at lightweight or obviously this yeah. one's back at featherweight? You'd prefer no, to stay I- at featherweight. Yeah, absolutely. Featherweight, yeah, featherweight is my division. But because of there wasn't any featherweight willing to fight me, uh, I jumped to lightweight, and I had a few fights in lightweight. Two, two or three of my fights was in lightweight. Fair enough. All right, we'll move on to this upcoming fight against uh, Justin Van Heerden. Now, what stands out to you most about Justin? Uh I know him. I watch some of his fights. He's an experienced guy. He's he's a grappler. He trained with the champ, so it gives him a lot of energy and like courage. So, um, and I watch his fight. I know what I have to do in this fight, July 16th. So, and as as a person, I respect him. Uh, till he said I'm not on his level. So after that. Yeah, I'm going to show him something. <laughs> I'm uh, uh, he's a, as you said, he's a wrestler. You've got some some pretty decent grappling skills yourself. That's usually a bit of a recipe for a stand up war. Is is that sort of what you're expecting on July 16th? Yeah, I think the, yeah, that's what I expect. He's gonna go for doing what he's good at wrestling and grappling because I don't think so it's kind of going to struggle me. But I'm ready for anything. 
what is your what is your ideal win look like on that night? Hundred percent is gonna be finish. Um, uh, I'm really confident in that. Uh, and it, it looks like it's the the number one contender fight for the eternal featherweight title. Is that what you're expecting after this fight? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, even for this fight, I'm supposed to fight with the uh, eternal uh, champ, but as you know, he doesn't want to smoke. And <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, we're supposed to fight a few times, but he didn't. He didn't take the fight, so for me, there's no choice. To be honest, I deserve to fight for quite a bit at the championship, but because the champion doesn't want to fight, and it's like I'm frustrating. I've been training really hard, but there's no opponent. I'm telling you, to be honest, I didn't want to fight, but because there's no any other option, uh, better than nothing. But I believe I deserve, I, I deserve it. I deserve it to fight for it in our championship, even right now. But because the champion doesn't want to take this fight. What are your What are your goals at this point in MMA? Like, you're hoping to go to the UFC to go overseas. I'm assuming that's what your goals yeah. are at this point. Yes. Yeah, definitely. My goal is to get UFC. Uh, I think after this fight. There's something going to happen because I've been in this game for a long time and, and I proved and I show everyone, even in Australia and overseas, um, I'm capable to fight in bigger show like UFC or overseas because I believe in myself and my, my skills. And yeah, uh, already I have seven fights with this one, eight and zero. And it's going to be eight finish because. None of my fight goes to this time. Uh, not so, a fan of the judges, mate. Yeah, not a fan of the judges. <laughs> so, yeah, I believe I'm ready for the biggest show in the, uh, the world, UFC. If they give me a chance, mm-hmm. amazing. If not, uh, let's see what's going to happen. Maybe at the North Championship. Or I don't really care about that, but if it's an option... Yes, if not, hopefully UFC. Regardless, I think the the featherweight title, if 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 you're not picked up after this next fight, assuming you get the win, it gives you more notoriety in the in the Australian scene anyway, and it gets you that one step closer. Um, there was chatter, I think, online in in, a, in 2020 about you going to the Contender Series. Is that something that trickled down to you? I came across a couple uh, a couple reports. Yeah. Yeah, I think they picked me up for uh, UFC contender, but because of my visa condition, I cannot leave Australia. That's one of the most, uh, one of the reason I'm been fighting in Australia. I have a lot of uh, option, a lot of fight overseas. They want me to go one championship, PFL, a lot of uh, promotion around the world, ACB, ACA. But because of some problem on my visa condition, I cannot leave Australia right now. The last seven, nine, eight, nine years, and that's oh. why I stuck in Australia. Otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight in Australia. Is that something that that you've worked out now, or you're in the process yeah, of yeah, sorting yeah, it out? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's in process of sorting out, but it's a long process. It's been like nine years it's still. But hopefully, I'm going to get my biggest win. So that's one of the reasons I'm still in Australia. That's crazy, man. That's a very long time. Yeah. I don't envy you at all. Um, yeah. I, look, I, I do have to bring up the age, and I don't mean any offense. You're 34 now, which in relative terms isn't young in MMA, especially at the lighter weights. Why do you believe yeah. yourself, why do you believe that the UFC will take a chance on a mature prospect like you? Yeah, because... Uh, because I've been this, in this game for a long time, so uh, I'm not a, just at the beginning or like. Uh, I believe if they give me a chance, uh, I can perform. I know myself. I'm. I've been training a long time. It's. I think it's time to fight. In. Uh, I'm ready to fight. 
Mm -hmm. I'm very far. I have experience, and these are. Uh, I know the game. There was a lot of players who just came to UFC as like same age as me, or maybe older than me, and become champion. Uh, I think the age is only a number, and uh, it's your mentality and what you, what you want. So I believe in myself, uh, and I know I'm gonna be UFC fighter, and I'm, my goal is. To be UFC champion, and that's why I'm still here, and I'm training and fighting every day to to get my goals. And yeah, let's see. Let's see, indeed. First, first Iranian champion, you reckon? Who's in that? We got Benil Darush in, in there now, and I think uh, yeah. Panik Yanzad on the female side. I'm not sure how many mm -hmm. other Iranian fighters there are. Yeah, we have uh, some Iranian fighters, but they not they didn't born in Iran. Yeah, uh, okay, I think yeah. I'm, I'm going to be the first Persian UFC champion who was born in Iran. And that's my goal. I'll go for it. It's, it takes whatever it, it takes. I'd like to get your um, your opinion on the UFC feeder leagues like the Contender Series and um, and Road to UFC. As an Australian fighter and someone that's been over here for a while now, do you feel like they give a, a clear path and a clear goal to the big leagues? Yeah, I think... It's a good path to get in UFC, but uh, personally, I don't like that because um, we are fighters. If someone, if you can uh, find that, like to watching the fighters how they fight or uh, by their performance, you like you can just pick them for UFC or bigger show. Personally, I don't like to go to. Uh, contender series, but it's good part for young, young fighters. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, last thing for me tonight before I let you go, you've been in camp for a little while. I'm assuming you, the weight's coming down. You, you know, yeah. starving yourself yeah. a little bit. What's yeah. the uh, What's the first big feed you have after after the fight? Uh, after the fight, <laughs> I really love Persian food, but I don't think yeah, I don't think so. In golf courses like. Good Persian restaurant, so I think I'm going for the big burgers. <laughs> I really big burger burgers. and a coke. Yeah, big burger and all that. Yeah. Very nice, mate. Very nice. All right, so uh, that's Muhammad Alavi, Muhammad Scarface Alavi out of Sydney. Again, he's seven and zero, fighting Justin Van Heerden at Eternal sixty seven for the number one contender spot at featherweight there on July sixteen. That's available on Fight Pass. Muhammad, it's been an awesome, awesome uh, experience chatting to you, mate. It's been fantastic getting to learn a bit more about you. Thank you so much, my friend. I really appreciate it for your time and your effort. And it was my pleasure. My pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. Cheers. I promise you, 8 and 0, July 16th. <laughs>